Welcome back to another episode of Growing with Alona. Thank you very much for joining us for week three. Yes. So we're super excited to share with you uh, the tower. So we've had a whole seven days of growing, and you said you never know what to expect. No. And you came in today, and we already have amazing growth. And uh, the viewers might not be able to see it. Jason, maybe if you can bring up. We uh, Jason was kind enough to take a photo of, I think, the arugula. The arugula. So that's already uh, growing lovely. And um, our baby cucumber. Yeah, so so I think we planted two, yes. and we have one. So but far. that's part of... So let's uh, let's talk about that. I think the second cucumber was here or your side. Yeah, it's on my side. Yeah. And what do we do? Do we just do we? Pa do, I have zero patience. Do we? Are we patient and do we wait I, and I see if wait. it shows up? Yeah, I would wait till okay. next week, and then if it doesn't pop up, we can always replant another one. Same rock wool. Yeah, we can try and dig it out, pop it in, and see what happens. Again. That's amazing. Okay, so um, are you happy with the growth? I'm really happy, and I was just telling Nikki when sometime when I was coming in, I'm like, "What's going to happen with them?" Because it's a surprise, right? You're taking a seed, you're putting it in there, and you're like, "What? What's it going to do?" And most of the time, it will sprout, like most of this tower did. But there are seeds that just don't sprout, just like when you're growing outdoors. But I was super impressed. I got my camera out, and I was videoing it, and I'm like, "Look at these guys." It's like your babies, right? It's oh. just without all the work. Well, okay. Yeah. So, yes, without all the work. So, in Kelowna, we're having a 35, 38 degree heat wave. And I can tell you with absolute certainty, I have a lot of flowers and pots, peppers in pots and tomatoes in pots that are like tapping out. They're out. I'm not... I'm not super strong dirt gardener, right. and so I'm not having success keeping them alive. But, but the tower, the lighting is is uh, fixed. Yes, it's all the on water's timer. fixed. Yeah. The temperatures inside. Yeah. So we've got a lot of stability and variables. Yeah, totally. We control the environment for our plants. Almost foolproof. Almost. Yep. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's recap where we were. Three weeks ago, yes. uh, we put it together. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about the tower then, because you sell the towers. Yes. And I know we're receiving a lot of questions from people. Uh, again, when we talk about food security or um, growing your own food, your whys. Your whys are all different. Mine is I, I don't particularly love not knowing what's been mm -hmm. put on my food. I don't love that. Um, I don't love going to the grocery store and seeing sections of counters or shelf space that's empty. Yep. Doesn't make me feel overly yep. comfortable. So food security is a big issue for me. Uh, and then I really, really, really want to introduce much more greens, much yes. more greens. I want to get better at that. So this is a perfect solution for me. One you sell the towers. Yes. I love this tower. I have a tower at home from Wayfair that I don't love as much as I love this tower. Yes. So the let's talk about the price for this. You sell them. These so again, this one is up to here is probably a normal size tower. This is actually a full size tower. This is how it comes. Okay. I think I told you there's two different towers. So this is called the Tower Garden Home. It okay. is the smaller base that we have. It's the same exact tower that the other one has, except we've made it a little bit smaller so it could fit in smaller spaces. Like condos, condos basement suites, hall closets. Like people are, they're getting creative when they're growing indoors. Furnace rooms, and it's just a perfect little size to fit into a corner, but it's still powerful. It has 16 big openings and 16 baby greens. Okay. So it gives you 32 plants in this three square feet. Three, square, Three feet. square feet with the lights and everything. Yeah, when you're, you know, we have the lights on. And the tower garden, it comes with everything you need to get started. Okay. It comes with the little rockwell cubes. It comes with the seeds. It comes with the vermiculite that we put on last okay, week. Okay, okay. It comes with the baskets. It comes with the actual tower. It comes with the pump. Like it is like a plug and play. You get it, you have everything you need to get started. 
arrives, put it together, seed it, and get growing. And you're like, ready to go. Okay, yeah. okay. And then the only thing we add on are the lights. Okay. So this unit all comes together for outdoor growing, but we do live in Canada, mm. and we do want to extend our growing season, so the lights are a must. Okay. Yeah. So okay. We add the lights on, and I believe all together we're at about sixteen hundred. Okay. Um, I do recommend getting extra nutrients because the nutrients are just small little containers, and when you run out, I'd rather you be proactive and have extra on hand. So those are the jugs you brought last week, yes, the, bigger, the jugs. bigger jugs. We had the A and the B. Yes. You got easy it. peasy A B. Yes. And then we had the pH up and the pH down. Oh, got it. And the tester kit. And the little tester kit. Yep. So, so that all comes with it. Okay. It comes with small little nutrients, A and B. Okay. But I always say just get the big ones so you're good for like at least eight months to a year. And then you don't have to purchase anything. Okay. Else. So let's price that out. Sometimes uh, people are going to say 1600 holy wackadoodle. Yes. But again, that's 130 and change. $130 a month, 12 months, and it's yours. Yes. No interest. Yeah. Where else can you do that? You no. can't just go to Costco and say, oh... I'd love to buy this paddle board <laughs> or yeah. this furniture. Can I no put interest, it on no, no interest no. payment? So we do offer that, which is really awesome. Okay. So the the barrier to entry would be, I don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. hard. I'm not sure I can grow. And I think in three weeks we've shown it's not hard. I thought it was actually harder. And you a little bit scared me in that you're like, winging six seeds in this little yes. one or one seed in that little one but I feel brave I think I can do yeah. it again so you it's totally do it. almost foolproof yes. and um I think it's not it's not cost prohibitive especially if we amortize it over 12 months and mm -hmm. we're not paying interest so I know 130 dollars I can spend that mm -hmm literally a blink of an eye yeah. in a grocery store. You store. go for dinner even, right? Like some yep. people don't blink or, I mean, everybody spends their money where it's important, but I think just bringing the awareness that for $130 the first month, I mean, we might be able to eat off of this soonish, right? It's been only a week. Yeah. Uh, probably not $130 worth, but as you go on and then year after year, like I bought my first tower nine years ago. So I have used it for nine years all year round growing food. So you can't really put a price to that. And no. I think like you were saying is what is on our food is really important. Huge. Where did it come from? How long ago did they pick it? And that we can harvest it over and over and over again. Yeah. You know, we're not just pulling it out and then we're done. We can keep eating off of it. So there's less waste as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So let's go. Uh, let's, let's maybe try and answer some common questions. So yeah. people would ask, what's the difference between traditional soil gardening and, um, Aeroponics. Aeroponics. Mm -hmm. So we're no dirt. No dirt. What I haven't seen bugs yet. No. So it depends on your environment. The actual plants wouldn't bring bugs, right? We do have spiders, I'm sure, in different spaces. Um, sometimes other plants, they can hop mm. from other plants. So a lot of people will be like, oh, I have this huge room full of plants. I'm going to put a tower in there. And I'm like, just be mindful if in the dirt, there could be little eggs in there from the bugs, right? And then they sprout and then they jump right onto the light. They love the light. Okay. So if they're not another plant, they can jump onto here. So we just have to be mindful mm. of that. Um, that's how usually, and at my house, I have two dogs. So when I keep my patio door open all in the winter when they're coming and going or the spring and fall, sometimes the bugs can come in. But okay. I've only had bugs twice on my tower in nine years indoors. Hmm. Twice. So it's definitely small, small chance compared to outside where, you know, you're gardening and you have this beautiful head of maybe kale, kale yeah, and so there's bad. all these holes aphids. and aphids and yeah. So that does not happen indoors like that. So there's no uh, getting ladybugs and releasing them on your plants. I mean, I'm sure people tower. have done it, but mm -hmm. I don't really want Don't need to. Uh, don't no, thanks. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. Nothing okay. to worry about. No, no. Yeah. Uh, the equipment needed to start, we've covered that. It's yeah. all included when you receive it. Yeah. Um, type of plants. So we have, as we said last week, we've got kale in here. We've got microgreens. We've got cucumbers. We've got lettuce, basil. I think we have thyme in here. We, we have, have dill, peppers, yeah. tomatoes. Pretty yeah. thorough. Yeah. We've got a good a good group. Right. Yep. So 
certainly can't plant the root plants, mm -hmm. our potatoes, our carrots, our beets, those kinds of things. Onions. So, yep, we'd still have to be doing some dirt yes. gardening for those or visiting our local yes. growers mm -hmm. and farmers or our um, farmers markets that are here Wednesdays and Saturdays. Um, what about... Uh, the nutrients and the maintenance of this. So I asked you, okay, so we filled this tower last week yes. with water. You did per the amount of water equal the right nutrients for the A and then the B. Yes. And then I asked you, I'm panicking, thinking that <laughs> the plants need food. Can we feed them? Can we feed them? And you're like, no. no. So we're they're growing, but they have everything they need they in do. this reservoir yeah, this reservoir yeah so we're good yep. until next week until next week so what i was saying is the reservoir is full of water and there's a, a water submissible pump small little wa wattage pump that pushes the nutrients up showers all the roots it's on a timer so we don't have to do much with it unless the water goes about halfway so we're really only filling it halfway every time we fill it okay you don't want to just fill a little bit because then you don't know how much of the nutrients to put in Okay. Right? We have no idea. But if we go halfway, we can half what it says on the the A and B. So, so are we trying to, to add water in like quantities of liters, like one liter all the I, time or not necessarily? I'm sure people do You're, that. But oh, I you just, don't. I just wait till it's halfway half. and then I know how much is in here. There's 13 gallons. I half it and then I look on the back and it tells me how much to put and then I just have it written Test down. Test it. Okay. Every two weeks, I fill up water, nutrients, and check the pH. Okay. And the cool thing about pH is I call myself a really lazy tower gardener. So when you're panicking, <laughs> I'm like, I am super lazy. So sometimes I forget to check the pH. That could happen. And then I look at my plant and I go, wow, why are these kind of yellow? Uh, That's a sign. There's something okay, off okay. and it's usually the pH. Okay. So then I go check my pH and I can tell, okay, it's a little bit off. I adjust it and then they come back. But to avoid that, you should check your pH every time in the beginning when you fill up. So every two weeks, nutrients, pH, water. Just get in the habit. Nutrients, pH, water. Yeah, and okay. then let's say your pH is always perfect. Then there's no need to do it every time. Okay. Because nothing is really changing, right? Huh. But, but our water is different, you know, depending where you live, like Black Mountain Irrigation or Rutland Water or I don't know all the other ones. Uh, you know, we just want to make sure that you know that the pH is right. Because last time we did this, we had to adjust it, right? Yeah, so, we did. So it's something that I would check again next week. We will check the pH again. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we've uh, had some interest in people. People have been emailing in and calling and asking about the, the towers. Uh, I really do want to see some businesses step up to put these towers in their offices to share yes. food with their team and their staff to grow it together but also to share it with our with our local charities if there's an abundance of, yes. of food that's coming from this i'd really like to see um our business community step up and help share yes so anything else uh, we should talk about today or cover i feel like you know you were talking about the heat wave you yeah. were talking about how some of your plants are not loving it. Yep. Same thing happened at my house. I have a beautiful planter of flowers and it all died after like two days. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't take long. No. And with the tower, what I love is you can literally go away for an all-inclusive vacation for almost two weeks, 10 days, oh seven days. Oh, my gosh. And you don't have to have someone to come over, look after your garden, someone to weed it, someone to water it. You just let it do its thing as long as it's plugged in. Set, yeah. set properly it'll just keep doing its thing while you're away it is so, very set and forget so interesting mm -hmm. okay because i think like you were talking about objections a lot of people think it's going to take a lot of time and they're just unsure right they're like well I'm not, i don't know how to do it so you assume it's going to be hard but like i said i'm a lazy tower gardener and if i can do it pretty much anybody can do it and schools little kids can do it so if little kids can follow instructions we all can Absolutely. And, and then, I, I love the water. The water sound that kicks in here every hour, hour every like hour. It's a waterfall. Yeah. yeah. Definitely soothing. Yeah. Yep. And it's just easy. And I'm the same as you. I always think we need to educate people on food security, take control of our own food supply, and also save money mm. and eat healthier. Because when we have it here, we will actually eat it. There's no way that you would be, let's say you came over and I had this tower and you said, um, hey, let's make an omelet. Look at all the good stuff I can put in the omelet. 
I can chop up some basil. I can chop up some arugula. We could have even some lettuce on the side, a cucumber, maybe even dill. Some people prefer to put that in. Tomatoes, right? And now we have a beautiful uh, omelet. Instead of if we didn't have this, we might do like the cucumber, pepper, whatever cheese that we have at home. But you're forced to eat it when you see it. So I do get really creative, and I'm like, oh, I have to harvest the arugula. I put it on the sourdough pizza that I make, right? Mm. I throw it onto pasta. I throw it onto a sandwich, onto a wrap. So you do end up eating healthier because you're growing it, and it's right in front of your eyes. How how young were your children when you started growing the tower? Would so, they have been? Uh, they are <clears throat> 17 and 14 now, so here are my math skills. So <laughs> five and... Seven. Yeah. Five and seven. Yeah. Okay. So our three-year-old, my three-year-old granddaughter, we have hydroponics. So you're teaching me well. This is aeroponics Aeroponics. because it's not sitting in water. My hydroponics countertop one sits in water, and I have it um, planted in basil. Every day she's pulling basil leaves off and just eating them as she's uh, in the kitchen if we're doing something so the I think when it's around it begins your modeling mm-hmm. food choices that are healthy yeah and we're also not spending like six ninety nine on a small bag of basil that you need for like one appetizer and then the rest just goes to waste bad it goes bad yeah and then you can just clip off of it as you need and it'll keep growing and I'm looking forward to doing that with you when we're starting to harvest yeah. in understanding and I'm I'm getting it I think you're a little bit of a wild wild west <laughs> tower lady yes. but I think I don't know if there's a science to pick the basil this way or not this way so we I definitely will talk about that. yeah I of how to harvest and yeah different ways to harvest yeah so that we don't kill it yes. and it keeps growing yes okay we can definitely talk about all those things yes Text us your messages, email us your messages, let us know what uh, what worries you or what you wonder about in doing this and uh, we'll be sure to answer those questions here and see you next week as you yes. continue to grow with Alona. Uh-huh.